We thank you because unto you shall the gathering of the people be. We appreciate you, Lord, because you said upon Mount Zion there will be deliverance and there will be holiness, and the house of Jacob will possess their possession. Lord, even upon this mountain this morning, by your glory, by your mercy, and by your presence, let there be deliverance upon your people in the name of Jesus. Whatever be the long standing issue, whether it's been for ages, Lord, you are the ancient of days, and you are able to do all things. Lord, we ask that you approve whatever the enemy has planted in the life of anyone here, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, visit everyone with your glory. Let everyone be elevated to the next level. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And the saints of God shout, Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to see every one of your faces today. Everyone is looking wonderful and uh, amazing. Yes, amazing. Praise God. Let me talk to your neighbor to your right and to your left and say it's good to see you in church today. Amen. Tell him or ask that God has something for you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm almost in your face. This is too close to you guys. Amen. No, no, we'll, no, we'll take care of it later. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I'm excited for all the testimonies that we've heard. I know God is doing a lot and many more things He will still do. And um, one thing that enables you to receive from the Lord is your determination. You know, once you make up your mind for something, you get it. The Bible says that the woman with the issue of blood had this condition for 12 years. And she's, she has gone to a lot of places. She's tried everything. They've experimented on her. She has become almost like, like a lab rat, as it were, because all manner of experiment was going on on her. But she wasn't getting better. But the Bible told us that when she heard of Jesus, she now said to herself, because your miracle starts with you. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. She said to herself, if I see him and touch him, I know I'll be made whole. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that was exactly what she got. Now, confirming that again, her sister came up and she said that I must receive my healing today. And she came to church with that determination. Nobody mentioned her case. The pastor didn't mention that, but she had a desire in her heart, which God sees. God sees everything. He sees your heart, He knows you, and He knows what you want. So she came with that determination and that expectation, and she got what she expected. I also told you the story of a young girl who went to a crusade ground, right? After the miracles, healing, and all that, different people got him healed and testimony. Nothing happened to him, and he was crippled. So, after the old Joshua, the man of God was about to go home. <laughs> she went to look for man of God. When she saw him, he said, excuse me, sir. I am supposed to be healed today. Praise the Lord. I am supposed to be healed today. He was expectant. And when the man of God saw it, it's all right. This one already had faith. I don't need to start preaching to him again. And he prayed for him right there. He got his miracle, stood up, and then he walked home. It is your expectation, ladies and gentlemen, that trust the anointed. If you, the woman touched the hand and virtue flow because she expected, do you expect something to do? Yes. God is here. Jesus is here. Believe it and receive your own. I don't know, I don't know your problem. Praise the Lord. God, but God knows. And your expectation will draw his grace upon your life. And you will receive your portion in Jesus' name. Alright, our time is fast spent. I'll try and be very I'll try and rush through the message today. Even though it's supposed to be a long one. It's supposed to be like two hours message. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But uh, we'll make it brief. Amen to Jesus. I don't think I've ever spoken for two hours in the church before. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The other day I was ministering and then I forgot to give the points. I didn't even touch the points. I ended that introduction. So then I got to my realize I didn't finish the message. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. 
But anyway, I know God has something for each of us today. And uh, He's going to take us to our next level. Now in this message, you are going to discover where you are. You will discover the state that you are in presently. Now many people are, many people don't really understand their, their level or the state they are in with God. You must understand that the life we are living in is, it goes beyond Bible study and memorizing scriptures. Christianity goes beyond Bible study and what? Memorizing scriptures or just coming to church and clap your hands and sing and pray. It goes beyond that. These exercises are meant to get you into the real thing. But they are not the real thing. Amen? Because if you think that the real thing, once you do it, you feel as if you have done your obligation. And then you go your way. Like, you know, our other brothers in the other religion, they, they must do it five times a day. It doesn't matter whether their heart is wicked or not. As long as they have done that five times a day, they feel they have done something right. It's called religion. And that can never get you to God. So when you pray, you come to church, you pray, and then you read your Bible, you try to memorize, and you think you are serving God. No, sir, you are not serving God. Because until you have a genuine touch, you've not really done the right thing. Praise the Lord. Alright, so this morning, my topic, do we have it on? Can we say it together? Ancient landmarks. Ancient landmarks. Ancient landmark. Praise the Lord. I don't know why I chose this topic. Amen. But I'm going to be saying some things that borders along this line and that will help each and every one of us know that the life we've been called to live in is actually a journey. You are in this world, you are transiting. You are on a journey. And if, you, if all your life expectation is only in this world, but according to Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he said, if only in this life we have hope, then we are of all men most miserable. If all your expectation and all your hope is only in this life, then you are living a miserable life. Because at the end of it, this life is going to end. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm not saying all of this just to get you to forget this life because you're already here. There are, there's something good for you in this life. Amen? That's why you are here. God didn't bring you here just to go through life and then suffer. No. He brought you here to enjoy all things. And at the same time, to move on to the next level. Yes, Praise God. Alright, so let's see. Thank you. Let's see... Um, Proverbs chapter 22 verse 28. Just read that and then I'll move on from there. It says, Remove not the ancient landmarks which thy fathers have set. Remove not the ancient landmarks which thy fathers have set. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then also see Hebrews 6 verse 12. Then I will explain. Hebrews 6 verse 12. It said, That ye be not what? Slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Now, the, the, the landmark that the fathers have set, there were things they did. Now, if I try to define the word landmark, this landmark simply means signs and signs or posts or mileage which men have reached on their journey. Like, for example, if you are traveling, um, a long journey, there are landmarks that indicate how long you have gotten to. Whether you have a couple of more miles to go before you get to your destination. They all give you that, you know, they help you to know how far you have come. So, the Father set landmarks to indicate our state and to show how far we've gone on our journey. Because Christianity is actually a journey. If any man be in Christ, is a new creature, the Bible says, all things have passed away. But you see, that is the beginning. That is like kindergarten. Mm. You are in Christ, but you need to journey into Christ. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are in Christ. If you remain there, you will not get the best. You must understand that the, the, the promises of God and the greatness that God has ordained for you, they are in levels. And until you grow to a certain level, certain things will not come to you. Certain blessings will not hit you because you, you, cannot, you cannot handle it. The Bible says, eyes have not seen. 
ears have not heard. It has not entered the heart of men the things that God has prepared for those that love him. See, but God is revealing them to us by the Spirit. And then the Bible says, the Spirit searches all things and the deep things of God. The Spirit reveals and unveils to us the counsel and the promise of God for our lives. And He gives them to us in bits and in pieces because we can't contain everything at once. Many of the things many of us are asking for, if you get them now, you will lose God. But God wants you to match up a state where you can handle it and not forget God. Amen. Amen. Because believe me, the things, if you get certain things, I'm telling you, you will, you, you will just, your mind will just turn away from God. Why? Because 90% of your prayer point is give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. 90%. So when those things are answered, what other prayer point do you have? That means you will not pray anymore. You will not seek God anymore. Amen to Jesus. Amen. It's unfortunate that you know uh, the recent gospel that has been going on in Africa, well, that is changing now anyway, Amen. has been the gospel of prosperity. You know, you tell people, you'll be blessed. Amen. In three days time, you'll have a car. Amen. You will have a lot. Amen. You will have a lot, you will have a car. It's not gospel. <laughs> because if all your desire is Lord, I need a house and a car. That means you don't go and meet Elon Musk. He will give you a car. Yes, yes, yes. Amen? Yes. If your prayer point is what a man can do, then you don't really have a prayer point. Mm. Praise the Lord. Mm. You don't have a prayer point. But you see, if that is all that you live for, then you are living a futile life. But God wants us to understand the reason we came into this world. It goes beyond bread and butter. It goes beyond bread and wine. Amen to Jesus. Yeah. Alright, so the ancient landmarks. So the fathers have set this mark, or rather they, they attain this level, and now it's saying we should not neglect it. Don't, don't, don't neglect it. Be followers of those who through faith and patience obtain the promise. Why? There's a promise for everybody. You must understand that when you came into Christ, you were given an advantage. The Bible says, we have been delivered. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13. He said, who has delivered us from the powers of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And in the kingdom of God, it's a kingdom of possibilities. Everything works in God's kingdom. Oh my God. The Bible says we have not come onto a physical mountain that can be touched. But we have come onto Mount Zion. The city of the living God unto the innumerable company of angels unto God the judge and unto Jesus the mediator of the new covenant unto where the spirits of just men are made perfect and unto the blood of the sprinkling that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel so we have come unto Mount Zion and that is where you are now in right now but you see we will not enjoy the benefit of Zion until we start to journey until we start to go deeper. We cannot hang around the surface. And let me submit to you that the good things of life are not found on the surface. Yes, yes, yes. Praise the Lord. Yes, the good things of life are not found on the surface. You have to go deeper. Yes, you don't get gold on the surface. No. You don't get diamond on the surface. You don't get petroleum on the surface. You have to dig deep to get it. Even in the ocean, you can't get good fishes on the surface or at the shallow end. You have to go deep. And God wants each and every one of us to go deeper. Praise the Lord. And the landmarks that the fathers have set for us, they showed us how to go and what to do. And we shall be exploring some of them as we move along this morning in Jesus' name. So the journey in Christ is actually a journey unto sonship. Unto becoming more like Christ. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, he said, to whom he did foreknow, then he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his dear son. Praise the Lord. Verse 29, please. To whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his dear son. So God wants us to come to a point where we conform to the image of the son of God. And once we attain that measure and that stature, then we can wield authority in this world. 
And when we start wielding authority in this world, we can command things and they will respond to us. Many things we pursue after, we are meant to call them forth. Praise the Lord. We are meant to call them forth. Jesus said, if you will say to this mountain, he didn't say you should, you should climb the mountain. He didn't say you should break, break it down. He said, speak to it. Like God told Moses, he said, speak to the rock. Speak to the rock. And the rock will bring out water. So God expects us to speak to things. But he said you must rise to a particular level of authority to do so. And God wants each and every one of us to get to that level. Amen. Amen. So, it's a journey, ladies and gentlemen. And it starts, our journey in Christ starts with an encounter. So I say encounter. Encounter. Mm -hmm. encounter. encounter. We've been talking about it and in fact it's a lot of encounter. Amen to Jesus. Now, it starts with an encounter. Everyone needs to have an encounter with divinity. Everyone needs to have an encounter. There is no man in this life that will mentally succeed in life without the help of the spirit. Mm, mm, mm. Amen? Amen? Your technical know-how can only take you so far. But there's a level if you want to rise above that level, you must, you, you need the assistance of a spirit. So, you are either in a... <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. If you want to make it medially, there are two, you have choice of two things. Only two. Yes. Amen? Only two. You either belong to a secret cult or you dwell in a secret place. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's either of two things. Mm -hmm. Because at a certain level you want to get to, you can't break through. There are, the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities and powers. And against rulers of the darkness of this world. There are certain principalities that don't possess men. Listen. Possession is for demons. Demons possess men. But rulers of the darkness, they don't possess men. They possess territories. They are in charge of territories. And let me say this to us. <laughs> I was talking to a young man on, on Friday. We went for evangelism. I said to him, I asked him how long have we been here? He said um, he's been here for eight years. I said, wow, eight years. I said, me, I've been here nine years. And when I first came into the country, I asked people that were around me when I was evangelizing pretty before we started the church. I asked him, how long have been here? I've been here ten years. And I looked at the person talking to me. He's been here ten years. He doesn't show in his but I said, ten years? And you're like this? And the guy said, this country, this country. Now I understand, I'm nine years here to <laughs> Hallelujah. But this is what I discovered, ladies and gentlemen. I realized, even back then, that I began to take inventory and then I, I asked questions and several. Then it dawned on me that <laughs> most people leave this country if they are not well guarded and strong. They make money here. And some of them finish it here. Yes. Very few that are strong live here with something. Yes. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. Very few. And it is the strong. Only the strong survive. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was listening to, I asked somebody about my, when I first came into the country, I had a sponsor. Of course, everybody had a sponsor. I came in with resident visa when I first came to the country. And my sponsor at the time was a very popular guy because he was doing well and along the line things began to happen and i asked him i asked someone about him some days ago like three four days ago and went ah oh that guy he's inside he's been there for like four months and that he's about to be deported with nothing oh jesus with nothing i say it has catch up with him amen and the guy is owing me like 7,000 dirhams. <laughs> but I can't get that one anymore. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But you see, he left with something. He left with nothing. Now, because there is a force yeah. and a power in the spiritual realm over this place. Yes, yes. yes. Believe me. Yes, yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. And you need to break through in the spirit. Oh my goodness. The other day, I don't know my I don't want to mention name, but anyway, 
I was hearing a voice note. I was in between wake and sleep, and I was hearing my wife playing a voice note of someone who brought in a good here, what about a couple of millions, you know, in Naira, and now it's been, they, they clamped on it. Mm. Oh, the government. Oh, I know, I know. Many. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Many. <laughs> we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world. For hear me, you cannot challenge principalities if you, if you don't grow. Mm. You can't challenge them if you don't have authority. That is why you must not joke with your Christianity. I told us it goes beyond Bible study and memorizing scriptures. Mm. And then you pray five minutes a day and then you try to appease yourself. Okay, I have prayed today, so I've done my duty. You've not done anything. It's a life. It's not a religion. Amen to Jesus. So it starts with an encounter. Once you have an encounter, it brings you to a level where you start relating with God. You talk to God because you know Him. And once you come to that point, you begin to understand the operations of God. Because until God leads you, the Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Only God can lead you to your place of rest in this world. Because this whole world lies in wickedness. You don't have to do anything for them to attack you. You don't have to do anything. Just be breathing, you'll get attacked. Praise the Lord. So that is why you must not joke. The time has come for everybody to wake up and come to the reality of the life that God has called them in. Christianity is the, anti, is the only way to, to, to be free from the powers of darkness, but you need to get serious in it. Remember about the problem Pastor Stevie Rose raised up when he came here and talked about the many things people do. You don't know that these things are all the enemy's plot to keep you in bondage. Everything you do that agrees with the enemy, you attract the spirits to yourself. And those spirits will keep on tormenting you. They'll keep fighting against your destiny. And you'll wonder why things are not working. Amen. Amen. But Jesus said you will know the truth. And the truth, and the truth will make you free. And I pray that God will unveil the truth to each and every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Now there's a story in the book of Genesis chapter 32. A very familiar story of Jacob. The Bible says that Jacob, um, after leaving his father's house, you know, he took the blessing of Esau and Esau vowed he was going to kill Jacob because Jacob stole his blessing. Jacob deceived him twice, as it were. The first time he took his bat right. He told Esau, Esau, Esau came in from hunting and was very hungry. He said, Jacob, my brother, I'm hungry. I need food, I want to eat. And then Jacob said, you want food? You want to eat? I have food. I will give you. It will cost you something. And Esau said, what is it? Give me your birthright. <laughs> and then Esau said, birthright. What is birthright? You may eat birthright. You may take birthright. Give me food. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says Esau despised his birthright. Now he didn't know that the statement he made was actually an authority in the spirit. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. You think you just spoke. You don't know you are creating something. Be careful what you say. Amen. Things don't you, Oh my goodness. You don't know your words can stand against you. The Bible says by your words you shall be justified. And by your words you shall be condemned. So watch what comes out of your mouth. Because your tongue can set. The Bible says just like the little helm controls the big sheep. That is how your tongue is in your member. It controls your life. So when we, when we tell you, believer, say the right thing, well, it's not a cliche. Do you understand? Say to the righteous shall be well with him. So when you say it is well, don't say even in the well. It means you want to, you want to remain in the well. That's what it means. Don't ever say that. Praise the Lord. So he said, all right, take back right. He took the porridge and then the earth. And then um, at the end of time, Isaac, their father, grew up and was about to die and to release a blessing. He told Esau, go and prepare for me venison so that I can eat and then bless you before I die. And the Bible says the, the, the mother, that's uh, Rebecca, heard it and then quickly went and told Jacob, oh yeah, quickly, 
Prepare this thing. Let's give to your father. Your father wants to release the blessing. The blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What makes us go forward in this life is the blessing. blessing. Amen. Amen. When God made Adam in the beginning, after making Adam everything, what he did was that he blessed him and told him, be fruitful, yeah. multiply, have dominion, subdue the earth. So it is the blessing of God that makes us prosper. And the blessing is already here. And some people don't even know how to connect with the blessing. The Bible says we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. So if you are in Christ, the blessing is already upon you. Oh my God. Yeah. Alright, now he told Jacob, quickly do this. And then, long story short, Jacob took the blessing. And then he left. And when Esau heard that Jacob took the blessing, he vowed that if my father died, the person that is following my father is going to be Jacob. Because he's going to kill him. Because Esau was a hunter. So to him, blood is nothing. He can kill, he can do anything. So he's a very ras man. So when the mother heard that, okay, Esau had made up his mind to kill Jacob, he told Jacob, escape. And Jacob escaped and went to the father, uh, the, uh, the uncle's place. That's from the mother's side. Long story short, got married. I'm trying to bring down the story. I don't waste much time. Got married to two wives and had children. And then the time came after God has prospered him to an extent. He wanted to go back to his homeland, but he was afraid that he's going to meet Esau, his brother. And he remembered the promise Esau made. And you know, Esau is a very hard man. Esau does not forget, doesn't forgive. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And Jacob was afraid. And the Bible says in chapter 32 of Genesis, from verse 20 to 21, it said, And Jacob was left alone. Amen. Amen. And Jacob went on his way in verse 2. So uh, they went and presented themselves before him. No. Continue. See, and Jacob was left alone. Look, that, look at that for me. Just give me the story. And Jacob was uh, 24, 24, thank you. And Jacob was left alone. And there he wrestled with him a man until the breaking of the day. Continue. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the whole of his thigh. And the whole of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go for the day breaking. And he said, I will not let you go except you bless me. And he said unto him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have power with God and with men and have prevailed. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, listen to this. Jacob had an encounter. Well, here it is. What drove Jacob to God was his need. Remember the other day I told us that God wants to give you more than bread and wine. Just like the need drove Esau and uh, Saul to go and meet Samuel the prophet. It was the need that drove Jacob to meet God. Oh God, he must intervene in my situation. But as he was wrestling with God, God now brought him to alignment to fulfill his actual destiny. Because in the spirit it was written about Jacob that he was going to be a prince and through his lineage the Messiah is going to come through. But his need drove him. And then he had an encounter with God and his life now straightened out. Just like God will straighten up your life once you have an encounter with him. Amen, Amen to Jesus. Alright, so the encounter brought Jacob into alignment and then he received the blessing. Even the angel did not say anything about his brother coming to meet him. And did you notice that? Yes. He didn't say anything about it, but because the blessing was upon him, he will be protected. And God went ahead and then talked to Esau. The Bible says, if a man's ways please the Lord, he will make his enemies to be at peace with him. So all these ones that are praying, oh Lord, let my enemy die, die, die. They will die, but you get aligned with God first. Get aligned with God. And God will talk to your enemies for, by himself. He said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. So once you are aligned with God, God knows what to do. Listen, he said, anyone that touches you is touching the apple of my eye. So how can you do that? So the first thing 
we need to do or the landmark that we need to get the first one is having an encounter with God and everyone needs to have an encounter it is in the place of encounter you discover who you truly are and why you came into this world you didn't come into this world just to fulfill just to eat, sleep give back to children and then have money and then enjoy life that's not why you came no, that's not why you came there's a reason you came into this world and you need to discover that reason and you discover it much more once you have an encounter with God everyone needs to have an encounter with God the reason you are jumping from pillar to post asking, looking for who, to, who will prophesy to you is because you don't know God for yourself so they can even prophet lie to you and you will accept it <laughs> praise the Lord hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. but if you know God for yourself then you will not be deceived amen, amen. so it starts with an encounter and then the next thing you need to have on this journey, the landmark you must get on this journey, is the landmark of growth. Everybody needs to grow. If you don't grow in this, in this faith, in this work of faith we are living in, <laughs> there's a little things to be tight. Amen? Amen? And if you look as if God is not fair, God is fair, but He wants you to grow. Praise the Lord. You, can, you have been a believer for years. And still you're on a particular level. That's why things are tough. Those tough things are meant to draw you to God. Just like Jacob did. He was left alone. There are times you have to separate yourself. Yes, yes. All these men hanging around with people is a distraction. Yes. You need to get alone with God. God. Seek God and let God show you. He said, call unto me and I will answer. And I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. There are many things about your life you don't know. You need to come to God for Him to reveal it to you. And once He reveals them to you, your life will start to make sense. Many people right now don't even know why they are alive. They don't know why. That's why you wake up in the morning, you are confused. You don't even know what to do. You, you, don't, you don't have a job. You don't know what to do. And instead of spending time seeking the face of God, you go about it, chatting and talking. If you are not talking, you are on Facebook from morning till night. And you spend 10 hours on Facebook, on social media. And then when it's time to pray, you can't pray. <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy. And it goes on like that, day in, day out. And you don't know your life is wasting away. Brothers, we don't have all the time in this yes, world. Yes, yes, yes. In case you don't know. Every day you encounter is reducing your time on earth. Whether you like it or not. I told you before, each time you celebrate your birthday, you have just announced you have less life to live. That's what you've announced. And that's the truth. The Bible says, teach us to number our days, our days. that we may gain a, a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number it. If you want to celebrate, celebrate the achievement you've done in God. The things that matter to God. That's what you should celebrate. Not just numbers. All we're, all we're celebrating is just numbers. And numbers doesn't mean it make any sense. Doesn't mean, doesn't have any value. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Growth. You need to grow. The Bible says in Galatians chapter four, from verse one. You need to grow. Tell me what you need to grow. <laughs> Tell me again. You need to grow. <laughs> now, you don't. The only way to go up or to stay up is to grow. Amen? Amen? If you jump up, you will come down. The only way to stay up is to grow up. Then you stay up. Do you understand? Yes. So if somebody give you money now, give you two million dirhams, suddenly you are already a millionaire, isn't it? That means you jump to be a millionaire. But I guarantee you, you are coming down. Because you didn't grow there. Do you understand? Yes. The Bible says wealth gotten by vanity will diminish. Yes. What you don't labor for that comes to you, you don't have the capacity to sustain it. Yes. It's only a matter of time. It will come down. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. I told you of the story of a man who got who hit the jackpot and got two million pounds. Mm. When the guy hit that money after doing a lot of casino, you know, and then he, he hit two million pounds, he was like, wow, my world is made. Too much money, he didn't know what to do. The first thing he did was, okay, he bought a house, which is reasonable, real estate, okay, he got a house. 
And then when he got the house, he bought a very large screen TV. He was a lover of football. I don't know what fan he was. Large screen TV. And then bought the decoder and then connected there and was watching Premier League. Sleeping from one channel to the other. And then he bought cartons and cartons of booze. So every morning, wake up in the morning, get one, click, and he's drinking and watching TV. <laughs> Amen. He's enjoying life. <laughs> he kept doing that for two weeks. And the guy drank himself to stupor. Drank and drank until he was senseless. Long story short, he died. Amen. The Bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them. The only way to, to get the goodies of the kingdom is to grow. You must grow. It's a prerequisite. It's a must. There are certain things God will not give you until you grow. You can cry from now to eternity. It won't come. Until you make up your mind to grow. You see, that's why when people don't realize that certain things they are asking for is not coming and they refuse to grow, guess what they will do? They will start cutting corners. They will seek other means. Why? Because all they are expecting is not coming from God. God is too slow. Let's look for something else to do. That's what's happened to a lot of people today. And that's how they put themselves in bondage. But you need to subject yourself to the rigors of growing. Now, he said, a hair. Galatians 4 from verse 1. He said, a hair, as long as he's a child, does not differ from a servant. Though he be Lord of all. Can I say this to you, ladies and gentlemen? Everything you did in this life is already available. Yes, sir. But they will not come until you mature yes. to handle them. He said, though you be Lord of all, continue, but it's under two thoughts and governors until the time appointed of the Father. It's under two thoughts. That means you must go through teaching. You must subject yourself to the disciplines of growth. It's under two thoughts and governors until the time appointed of the Father. Verse 3, even so we, when we were children, we are in bondage under the element of the world. Do you see what's happening now? Only children will be in bondage, although they are supposed to be free. That is why a lot of believers are bound. Why? They're still children. They are bound by the enemy. They are bound under the elements of the world. What they are supposed to rule over is ruling them because they are children. The Bible says there's an evil I have seen under the sun, as an error proceeding from the rulers. He said, folly is set in great dignity. I have seen servants on horses and princes walking barefooted. Praise the Lord. Why? Because they refuse to grow. If you want to be free from the grip of the enemy, you need to grow. Because authority is given to you when you grow. Praise the Lord. So, growth. Somebody say growth. Tell you need to grow up. Praise the Lord. Spiritually. And the element that enables us to grow, first you need to desire and then take in the, the word of God according to 2 Peter, so 1 Peter. He said, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Acts chapter 20 verse 32. Go there please. Acts 20, 20 32. Paul said here, he was talking to the Galatian, uh, the Ephesians church. He said, and now brethren, I commend you to to who? God. To God and to the word of his grace, which is able to what? Build you up and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. You need to let the word of God dwell in you. Your maturity comes as you get the word in you. So let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. It will make you grow. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. If you want to grow, you must eat this word. I'm not saying memorize. I'm not just saying you just, you need to study. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth. You must meditate upon it what? Yeah. Day and night. And observe to do everything that is written there. He said, then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. He said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. 
nor stand in the ways of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He said he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He's, he said his leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. That is what the world does to you. Hallelujah. You need the word of God to grow. Now having said that, after listening to the testimonies, I, I, I actually wanted to say this before preaching, but let me quickly say it now. There's a book that was posted on the church group yet some time ago. It's called The Court of Heaven. You remember that book? I want you guys to read that book. Read how to operate in the court of heaven. Because if you understand the legalities that goes on before the court of heaven, you will know how to organize yourself. And you will understand how the enemy operates and then deals with people. Because in the spirit realm is a legal, is full, is a realm of legalities. Praise the Lord. That is why God is called the judge. Why? He judges according to the legal system. And that's why the enemy is called the accuser of the brethren. He's the one that's always accusing you before the throne of God saying, God, look at this person. Look at what he did. Look at what, the, what, what he did over there. And those evidences they bring up, as long as it's legal before the court of heaven, God will pass a ruling. Amen. Amen. Whether in the favor of the enemy or not, God is the judge. Do you understand? Yes. So if the enemy has something against you, he can overpower you. Yes. Say so the prince of this world comments, and they have nothing in me. So when he comes to you and they have nothing against you, he cannot stand against you. No wonder he could not touch Job. The Bible says Job was a righteous man. He was a man that hates evil. He eschewed evil. He was a holy man. He walked with God. And because of that condition of his lifestyle, the enemy cannot touch him. It was God that brought Satan to his attention. Have you considered my servant Job? That there's no one like him on the earth? And Job said, well, I can't touch that one because there's nothing against him. Praise the Lord. Tell them to grow up. Grow up. Tell him, say, grow up. Grow up. He said, he said, if you don't grow, you will grow. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you don't want to grow in pain, you need to grow up. Ignorance is very costly. Yes. Huh? Yes. It's what? Yes. Brother, you need to know. Do you know that ignorance of a law is not an excuse? Yes. If you break the law, you will still pay. I don't know if you have crossed the river, the river crossing when the light was red and you got a fine in Dubai. You got a fine before, right? No, you've not got a fine before. Make sure you don't get one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. That you don't know is not an excuse. If you break the law, the other day I parked my car. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I was, in, I was just some minutes to where my car was and I saw this RTA guy. <laughs> already giving me I said, I said Baba, don't look at me, I'm just coming. I said, I'm oh, sorry, he said, sorry. But he has already given the fire. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You need to grow, ladies and gentlemen. Spiritually, it's very important. Amen. So I'm recommending that you read that book because you need to learn to read. Every believer should be a reader. The Bible says, look, it's a shame for a child of God not to have knowledge. He said, by people that destroy the lack of knowledge. It's not because the devil is powerful. It's because you don't know what to do. If you know what to do, you, if you know the truth, you will set free. Praise the Lord. So, please, if you have it, post it again on the group. Everybody should read. It's a test. If you like, read. If you like, don't read. But if you read, God is watching you. And you give me passport. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I guarantee if you read that book and you understand, it will help your prayer life. You will know how to pray and how to operate in the court of heaven. Because there's a court where everyone's case comes to. Do you understand? There's a court where everyone's case is presented before God. And Jesus Christ is called, he is our lawyer. You, you, need, to know, you need to know how to connect with him so that he can, he can be your advocate and adequately represent you to win the case. Amen? It's very important. So please read. Alright, the next thing I want to talk about because of time. My goodness. Oh Lord. 
Jesus is Lord. Alright. The next thing I want to talk about on the landmark is you need to learn to embrace your dealings. That's the dealings of God in your life. Now, this goes deeper now. Everybody has dealings in their life. There are things God is dealing with you on. Pay attention to them. There are some of you, God will just give you a desire or a burden to pray at a particular time. Pay attention to it and pray at that time. There are times God will tell you, okay, this thing, stop doing it. Pay attention because those things God is giving you, this instruction, is helping you to grow and then putting you in a position to receive all that He has ordained for you. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Some people have abortion, spiritual abortion. <laughs> and most of the time, we abort them on the altars of pleasures and convenience. Social media. God is giving you a desire to pray. And instead of praying, you know, I'm saying, let me just check, let me just, let me just check a message on Facebook. And by the time you scroll, something catch your attention. And before you know it, you are fixated there. One hour has gone. Two hours are still watching. And then the body to pray has left. And then you can't pray anymore. And maybe God wanted to do something in your life at that time. But you missed it. Because you neglected the dealing of the Lord. Pay attention to God's dealings in your life. If you want to get the best of God, Amy, like I said, Christianity is not, it's not just Bible study and memorizing scripture. It's a real life. Do you understand? Yes, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's a lifestyle. And God deals with each and every body individually. Certain instruction he gives to you. It may come as an idea. It may come as a premonition. It may come, it may just come. Maybe you wake up in the morning and then you suddenly have this feeling fast today. Amen. Amen. Fast today. And God wanted to do something in your life and he asks you to fast. And then you're like, okay, ah, fast. And then you look at the body. I'm still skinny. I don't want to lose this thing, right? I don't want to. And why are you busy considering that? And then you probably walk to the kitchen. Maybe somebody was preparing something and then a very nice aroma just, just hit your nose. And you're like, and then you might consider again. Okay, let me fast tomorrow. <laughs> and then you miss that particular thing that God wanted to do at that time. Can I only relate to what I'm saying today? And then the time you have this thing in you, you know you should do something. But you allow something else to overtake you. But you didn't know that it was the operation of the Spirit of God in your life to help you to bring you out of that depravity you are in. Pay attention to the dealings of God in your life. Because it will not happen all the time. You know what the Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 5? God says something very, very sad. He said, after God saw all the wickedness that is going on in the world, he now said something. He said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. My spirit shall not always strive with man. Because he's flesh. Praise the Lord. I will not always strive with him. Because God wants to do something. Thank you. Genesis 6, 3. All right. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. For that he is also flesh. Yet his days shall be 120. So God's spirit will not always strive with you. When you are supposed to do something and he has put in your hand and you refuse to do it, he may remind you one more time. If you still neglect it, he will not remind you again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pay attention. Tell him about pay attention. Pay attention. To God's dealings in your life. Amen. Look at um, Psalm 66. I'll just rush through this from verse 10 to 12. He said, For thou, O God, has proved us. God is proving us every day. Thou hast tried us as silver is tried. If God is going to try, if God is trying you, the intention is to elevate you. Amen. When God came to Abraham, Abraham, give me your son. Sacrifice him to me. On the, on, on, on the altar. 
The Bible says Abraham obeyed and took Isaac. But it was a test. When Abraham got to the mountain and was about to kill Isaac, God said, don't kill him. He said, now I know. Now I know. God tested him. He passed. And God said, you have passed. God is testing us every day. He said, you have proved us and you have tried us as silver is tried. Continue. He said, you brought us into a net. You laid affliction on our loins. Many of you are going through things right now. <laughs> you listen, listen. So you understand properly. God does not bring evil to people. He doesn't. But he has somebody who does. Hello? God does not tempt anybody. But he has somebody who does. That's his job. He walked to and fro. Seeking for whom to devour. Praise the Lord. So God allowed the enemy to lay affliction on our loins. Not to destroy us. Hello, somebody. Not to destroy us. But to prove our heart. If what you are asking for didn't come, will you still serve God? Will you still serve Him? Years ago, I had a lady said something. I, I, I had somebody say the lady said. <laughs> Praise God. But what she said was very interesting. We're talking about the coming of the Lord. Jesus is coming soon. I think he said, You shouldn't come now. I must marry first when he comes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, No, you must. I must marry first. You shouldn't come. Don't come here. I must marry. Amen. Because that's the ultimate desire. <laughs> Marriage is just the beginning. He said, Johnny. Praise the Lord. He said, Johnny. God allows certain affliction to come to our Lord to prove us. They are the dealings of the Lord sometimes. In verse 12, he said, Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire. We went through water. He said, But you brought us out into a worthy place. After every trial, you will always come out to a worthy place. But you must learn to go through. He said, when you go through the waters, I'll be with you. Yes, 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 you go to the yes, fire, it will yes, overshadow you. Yes, yes, yes. He said, he brought us out into a wealthy place. So the reason for the triumphs is so you can prepare yourself for the wealthy place is taking you to. Because God is a good God. He said, I know the thoughts I think towards you. They are thoughts of peace, not of evil. They are thought to give you an expected end. But you need to pay attention to his dealings in your life. Pay attention to the prompting is given to you. Don't neglect it. So if your breakthrough will just be a simple instruction that God gives to you. Maybe he's telling you, that money in your pocket, give it to so-and-so. You just have that premonition or that inclination or that instruction, just give. And then you now consider you don't have any other money in the house. You say, Lord, ah, this one. Ah. Okay, I'll, when I get money, I will give to her. But you have missed that moment. Praise the Lord. As many as are led by the Spirit of the Lord, they are the sons of God. God is leading us every now and then. But you need to learn to pay attention. If our affliction is prolonging than necessary, it means something is wrong. That's what it means. It means something is wrong. It should not. He said, weeping may endure for a night. But your joy comes in the morning. There's a time, there's an expiration date to every affliction. Yes, 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 yes. If we go through the normal protocol, yes, yes. praise the Lord. The last I'm going to talk about is this. After paying attention to your dealing, you must also pay attention to the seasons of life, of your life. Everybody has a season. Praise the Lord. The Bible says the sons of Issachar, according to First Chronicles chapter 12. Verse 32, he said, The sons of the men of Issachar, they were men who had understanding of the times and they know what Israel ought to do. He said, And the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the head of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their command. 
they know what to do because they are sensitive to the timing of God in their life. Everybody have a time and season that things just happen to you. Praise the Lord. There are seasons in your life you have this overwhelming grace. Alright? Maybe it was fast. You just know that you're not struggling. I've had it before. There was a time in my life it just came on me and there was no desire to eat for one month. I wasn't struggling. It was a grace. It was a season. And I just went through it like that. Even though I did not know that what was happening to me at the time. I didn't know it was God's dealing and God's grace at that time. Because grace is released to you to do things with ease. There are times also, you have this grace, you have this desire coming, I mean, ideas just flowing. It's a season. If you neglect those desires, I mean, those ideas coming to you, you might miss what God wants to do in your life. And there are seasons in your life, just have money flowing into your life, right? Now, if you don't channel the money well, because he said, day and night, cold and heat will not cease. There's always a circle in the life of a man. God told, after Joseph interpreted the dream of Pharaoh, he said, look, there's seven years of abundance. And then there'll be seven years of famine. What you do in the midst of the abundance is what will sustain you in the time of the famine. So when things are happening so fast, take advantage. Organize yourself. And God deals with each and everybody individually. Praise the Lord. There are times in your life you just have this natural desire to maybe pray in the night. And you, just, you just have that energy. If it comes to you, pray and do it well. Because if you neglect it, when that season go, you'll be surprised. You that used to pray from 12 to 3 before. If that season pass, once you get to 12 o'clock and you want to pray, you find out that you start to yawn at 12 10. And then you will pray and pray and pray and pray and open your eyes. It's 12 20. <laughs> Just to pray. And then you start to pray again, and then before you go, you yawn, and then you close your eyes. And when you open your eyes, it's 6 p.m. in the morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That season has passed. <laughs> Amen to Jesus. Now, I'm not saying this because it's peculiar to everybody. Individually, you have certain things that God is doing in your life, in your life and in that moment, there are times things just happen so fast. They just keep happening and they are not struggling for them. Maybe it's even favor. Everywhere you go, the people are just responding to you. It's a season. Praise the Lord. Pay attention to them and do it well. And do what you're supposed to do well. Reach out to people. Serve God the way you should serve Him. Because that season may not last. What you do well in that season is what will sustain you to the next. Praise the Lord. Now, all of these things, ladies and gentlemen, when we pay attention to them, they help us on the journey as we go along with God. Please understand, this life you've been called to live in is an actual life. It's not a religion. It is not just reading the Bible, memorizing scripture, pray five minutes and then you say, I have done to this duty. No, it goes beyond that. It starts with having an actual encounter with God, getting to know who God is revelationally. Not stories. I told us last week, stories will not sustain you. You've heard about God, you know about God, God does miracles and all that. When push comes to show, if you don't know God, <laughs> when situation hits you, you'll find yourself turning in the, 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 the next direction because you don't know Him. But the God you know, is a day that know your God will be strong. And they will do exploits. My prayer for every one of us is that we we'll become real with God. We we'll come to a point where we understand and know who God is and understand His dealings in our life. And once we walk with that dealings, we will not miss any moment. We will not miss the blessing He has released for us per time. Every man's greatness is in the hands of God. And God wants to give everybody. Everybody can be great. We are all blessed to be so. That's what we are called. God called us for glorification and not for shamification. Praise the Lord. We are all called to 
be glorified. The Bible says, look at the stars. All the stars, they shine. And they don't struggle for space. They are all stars and they all shine. So why can't we all be great? Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. But we'll be great to the degree we surrender and submit ourselves to God's operation in our lives. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So this is more like a wake-up call, calling us to the reality of the life we've been called into. So your Christianity is not just a show. Your Christianity is not just one of those, you know, I've been a Christian for 20 or 30 years, and there's nothing to show in your life. Come on. The time has come for us to, to get real with God and get the real substance. Because believe me, the scriptures cannot be broken. He said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And the scriptures cannot be broken. Amen to Jesus. Amen, Amen to Jesus. Amen. If you pay attention to this, I'm telling you, you will always escape the trap that the enemy sets. Because this world is full of traps. This world is full of wickedness. And the enemy's desire is to see everyone in bondage. You know, I read somewhere in the book of Isaiah where it says that the enemy that's talking about the devil, Lucifer, when he fell down, he said, is this the man that put people in bondage and will not let them go? Isaiah chapter 14 or thereabout. He said, when the enemy holds a man in captive, he does not let him go. That means once he puts you in bondage, he wants to keep you there till you die. There's no a beg. Amen? He does not understand what it means to have mercy. There's no mercy. The devil, he doesn't have any strand of mercy. Once he holds you and you are, and you are there, he will keep you there for life. And after dealing with you, he face your generation. And then continue on that same train. That's how you have generational causes. He has finished dealing with your grandfather, he now attacks your father. After attacking him, he comes to you. Why? Because his intention is to destroy. That's the only thing he knows. Still kill and destroy. And to escape it, you need to pay attention to the dealings of God in your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. And once you do so, you will escape the hold of the enemy. And you will sustain the authority to put the enemy where he belongs. Every righteous man has authority in Christ Jesus. Say, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpent and scorpion and over all the powers of the enemies, and nothing shall our enemies hurt you. Say with me, O oh Lord, oh Lord, help me. Help me. Say, O oh Lord, oh Lord, help me. Help me. One more time. Say, O oh Lord, oh Lord, help me. Help me. In Jesus' name. Let's stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet.